So it's out of the box now, let's go. Just line it up very gently. Hey everyone, Digital David here. Today in this video, I'm gonna be checking out the Intel Celeron G6900. I did purchase the CPU myself and any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're looking for this Intel CPU, the link to it will be in the video description. The first link will take you to an Amazon live stream featuring this item and you can shop the clickable carousel down below to browse this item and a bunch of other items as well. Here's a look at the retail box and packaging, very similar to all of your other Intel CPUs. And this one does come with a cooler as well. Two cores up to 3.4 gigahertz LGA 1700. This is a 12th gen CPU. Now let's open it up and look at the contents. Here are all the contents. First up, we have our product literature featuring our Intel inside sticker. And this has our setup and installation instructions for our cooler as well as how to install the CPU and then how to connect and wire everything up. So very detailed and thorough, step-by-step, -step, depending on the model of cooler that you have. There's also warranty information in the back and then everything again is repeated in multiple languages. Next, we have our included cooler right here with Intel's logo and branding on the fan. Take a look at the bottom side. We also already have our thermal paste already applied. Here's our fan connector, our four pin, bracket list design, easy to install. And then lastly, we have the CPU itself. Here it is from both sides. Now let's go ahead, let's get this installed. So here's the PC where we're gonna install the CPU. You may notice we already have everything built. We have our cooler removed and we currently have the 12700K. I need that CPU in another machine and this one's just gonna become a display machine. So perfect application for this 12th gen Celeron CPU. So first thing we're gonna do is remove our old CPU. Got our bracket right here. This just opens up like that and we can take our old CPU out. So there's that 12700K. And now it's time to open up the new one and we'll just pop it right in. So it's out of the box now, let's go. Just line it up very gently, like so. There's this little golden triangle down here. Make sure that they match with the triangle on the unit as well. That's where it's going to be. And then we could just take our cover right here and then just gently pop everything back down in place to make sure that it's seated properly. We have our CPU installed. If you're doing this with a fresh motherboard, you may have a plastic cover that'll pop right off in there when you have it installed and seated properly. Really nice to have that feedback, but very simple and straightforward to install the CPU. Now let's get a cooler on it and try it out. So our PC's all set up behind me. I'm really happy with how the build turned out. We have our cooler installed, everything looks great. We're using the CPU in this build because I plan to use it as a video prop like you see right here. So let's dive into some of the benchmarking in case you're interested to see what the CPU is capable of. Keep in mind, some of it will vary depending on the rest of your system and how everything's configured. First up, Cinebench R23, we got a multi-core score of 1977. We're at the very bottom of the list of 12 CPUs right there with our two cores. Let's look at the ranking and see how it changes with our single core score. We're actually in the middle of the pack right there. We got a score of 1071. You can see some CPUs that are below this one single core score wise and some that are above. And then our MP ratio info right here, we're showing 1.85. We're at the very bottom again with our Cinebench R23 test. Next, let's talk CPU Z. So first up, we have our CPU tab here going over all of the relevant information for this processor. If you wanna learn more about the Intel Celeron, feel free to pause your screen and look this data over. Next, you'll see some specs for our build. We're using an overkill motherboard. This is the MSI. Um, Z690 Force Wi-Fi motherboard. We got 32 gigs of DDR5. Here's our SPD settings, graphic settings with an RTX 3060. And now we have our bench results. So single thread, we're showing 532.8 and multi-thread 979.8. Let's see how that compares to some other CPUs within CPU Z. First up in the single thread category at the very top, we have the Intel 13900K for their 13th series CPUs. Right below that, we have the 13700K. We're at 532, so we gotta scroll pretty far down here. 
532. Let's see what CPUs fall right within range here. So we got 530 is the i5-11300H, and 534, that's interesting, is the 10700. Interesting, I'm not sure I would have thought that. So 10700 right above at 534. Now in regards to multi-thread, we have at the top 9700KF, that's really interesting to me, coming in at over 4000, 4146. Below that, we have the 12100, not bad rounding out the top five, top six. So let's go down to 979 and see what we stack up against. We're gonna be pretty far down here, way far down on the list. All right, so we're at the very bottom here, super interesting. Between the Core i7 Q7 Ford, and I'm not sure what that is, and an Intel Xeon right here. Other mainstream processors, we have the i7-920. So I'm not really sure how many people have actually benchmarked the CPU with CPU-Z, so that's super interesting, but we're at the very bottom, or I should say, you know, almost very bottom. And lastly, let's go over our Geekbench 5 results right here. So we're showing a single core score of 1227 and a multi-core score of 1896. Nice breakdown of our system information right there. Let's go look at that single core performance. So there it is. Feel free to pause to look at any particular metric that you want. And now let's go look at our multi-core performance. Again, 1896 was our score here. Feel free to pause, look over anything that you want. Now let's go see how that stacks up to the competition. First up for single core, as you'd expect up at the top, we got the Intel Core i9-13900K. Our score to remind you is 1227. So we gotta go down a little bit here on this list and see where we fall. 1227. All right, we're almost there. Okay, so here we go. 1227 is going to fall right in between. It's actually going to be the same as the i11 1135G7 and slightly above the Ryzen 9 3900 for single core. Now let's look at multi core. For multi core, we got a score of 1896. Up at the very top, we got our Threadripper Pro, followed by our 3990X and rounding out the top five, the 13900K and 13900KF. Again, for us, 1896, so we gotta scroll down and see where we land. Very far down, holy smokes. Are we gonna be at the bottom here? We said 1896, okay, so there's 1890 at the top. All right, 1897, we're right under the i3-8121U and we're right above the AMD FX6120, and we're right above the Intel Pentium G4600. So keep that in mind. If you've heard of any of these, some of these could be mobile CPUs. Not seen a lot of recent mainstream ones, but there we go. We're pretty far down on the list for our multi-core score, as you would expect with just two cores. So lastly, I wanted to check and see if this 12th gen CPU actually supports PCIe 4.0. So that'll vary depending on your motherboard and the drive that you're using, but I do have a 4.0 drive in there and this motherboard supports multiple PCIe 4.0 drives. And sure enough, look at the results that we're seeing that are finishing out in real time. Read score of 6,300 megabytes per second, write score of 4,400 megabytes per second. So well within range. It's great to see that that truly is supported. In looking at their website, if I'm understanding this correctly, it also looks like this supports PCIe 5.0 if I'm reading that line correctly and what this express revision is, but at a minimum you're getting 4.0 speeds if you have a compatible motherboard and drive installed. That's great at this price point because I think for a lot of people, this might be like a DIY 
um, NAS or things along those lines that you're going to want to use a CPU like this for. So now let me share with you my final thoughts in regards to the Intel Celeron G6900. This CPU definitely rings true with the phrase you get what you pay for. You're not getting 12700 or 12400 performance with this CPU, nor should you be expecting that because you didn't pay that much. You paid a fourth or less of the cost of the 12700. So for this CPU, if you're getting it at or near MSRP, I think you'll be really happy with it for your usage case and scenario. DIY server, great, count this in. Want to have a display PC in the background of your video? Great, count this in. Want to do some casual web browsing, things like that on a computer, but nothing too intensive like 4K video editing or trying to game at 1440p and 144 hertz? Then great, you'll enjoy this CPU as well. But just keep in mind, as with everything else, and especially tech related, you get what you pay for.